And welcome back to another edition of the On the Board Sports Podcast. I am your host, Will Truch, a.k.a. Will C. Coming to you from Long Island, New York. It's a beautiful Thursday. NFL schedule is going to drop today, but I have my co-host, Sean Thomas, with me today. Sean, a.k.a. Shawnee on the mic. Sean, how are you? Well, I'm doing good with a capital G. How are you doing, sir? I'm awesome with a capital A. Got to reference Dick Vitale for a second here, but we have a very special guest. Joining us is the one and only Tim DeFrancesco from TD Athletes Edge. Tim, thank you for coming on. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me on, gents. Absolutely. Thank you for coming aboard and sacrificing some time. I know you're a busy guy, even though we're all going through this pandemic together. And you're busy training, not only yourself, but the millions of people out there on Instagram and just showing people the right way how to work your body out. But first, but first, how did all this start up for you? Well, uh, let's see. The, so I, I think basically the vision of TD Athletes Edge and, and our platform uh, f- for what my team and I do what we do now of, you said it perfectly, help people to get strong and, and healthy the right way. It's always been a vision for me. It's, it's, it's not something that came about later and just kind of said, oh, well, I think I'll switch over and, and try this out. I can think I, – I remember having conversations with my brother who worked with the Yankees as an athletic trainer in their farm system for over seven seasons uh, back when we were in high school, him in junior high, and saying, you know, what would this look like when we get a chance to bring our skill sets and how do we combine? We both love sports. We both love science, helping people, love the body, learning how to prepare our own bodies for the game. We're a couple of slow white guys trying to figure out how we could uh, advance levels in the sports that we played. So we, you know, had had to figure that kind of stuff out for ourselves. And I, I think, you know, that sort of was always there. It was just trying to go one layer at a time. How do we build this vision out to doing something in a, in a real way. Um, and in today's day, you reach people both virtually and in person, you have to do both. And, and, um, it's, it's got us to this point now. And then, you know, how do we, how do I connect the dots in between? Well, I would say a couple of big kind of timestamps in, in my, my path. I, I played basketball at small division three school. And the best way I describe myself is many of your listeners will probably resonate with this is I, I was essentially Rudy. So I was the basketball version of Rudy. Um, the, the, my, my best stat was number of floor burns. And, um, you know, so basically the, 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 I, I was tasked with by my coaching staff in college trying to figure out how and lay out a strength and conditioning program for our, our team. And I love that process. I love trying to figure that out and trying to get that and having the feedback from the players and, you know, Hey, this stuff we did together, you laid it out. I feel as ready as I've ever felt for a season and see my injuries go down, see my performance go up and I feel ready. So that really galvanized me and, and my path of, of then going down the road of getting my doctorate in physical therapy, combining that as a licensed athletic trainer and strength and conditioning coach. And I had a chance after I finished my doctorate in physical therapy to, to the funny thing is, and, and this ties back to my brother is my former high school coach called me one day and goes, Hey, I just took a job with the Bakersfield jam, this D league, NBA D league. Now it's the NBA G league and the minor leagues, in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need a strength coach. We need an athletic trainer. We need somebody to take the reins on that stuff. Would your brother want to do that? And so my brother was entrenched in the Yankees farm system. It wasn't really going to fit for him, but I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm at a point where I'd love to kind of shake a hand at this myself. And I was working at a PT clinic, mostly full time. And then also he, my brother and I had started the first version of TD athletes edge in a, in a small scale way. And so I was like, I could do it. And I, I went out to Bakersfield. I learned how to do laundry, drive the bus, uh, practically fly the plane and do everything else besides what I thought I was going there to do, uh, to do athletic training and, and, mm-hmm. and uh, strength and conditioning. But that's how minor league sports works. Um, and then the, at some point we had some players get sent down to us from the Lakers. And so the Lakers training staff saw what some of the stuff I was doing. They really liked it. They wanted 
uh, I end up on the phone with Gary Vitti, legend in the field, 28, 32, however many years as a head athletic trainer of the Lakers in, in the prime of their, um, their organizational years. And uh, I think went to 12 finals and has about eight rings, something like that. So um, Gary calls me up and says, I want a physical therapist who's going to run my weight room. When can you start basically? And, um, and there I was. So uh, my time with the Lakers, I spent six seasons with them and um, it, it was, it was incredible in a lot of ways. It was, um, it, it was exhausting in a lot of ways, but we can get into that. So that, that's kind of the, some of the big timestamps for me uh, as to now, being able to just full-time develop that vision of TD Athletes Edge and having moved on from my time with the Lakers. Oh, that's amazing right there. Yeah, Tim, that's amazing. Tim, so the training that you and your team um, uh, do, do, does it change depending on whether the athlete plays a different sport or is the training like all the same? That's a really good question. So I think that there's a – there there's – there's not one answer to that. There's a couple sides to that answer. So the absolutely every person that we work with, whether you're a rostered athlete or whether you're general population experienced um, individual trying to kind of just keep head above water, get strong and feel better about yourself, move through your day. Um, you're going to get an individualized plan. And so for sure, if we're working with a lacrosse player versus a, a basketball player, a hockey player versus a volleyball player, those programs are going to look a, a, a bit different in, in, in certain ways. You know, the hockey player, the, the lacrosse player is not going to be doing a lot of jumping. So their program is not going to have a ton of the jump landing stuff, the preparation that those body areas need for that are just different. The hockey player is going to do a lot of lateral work and on skates. So they're going to need a little bit more work from kind of lateral multi-directional action, uh, that kind of stuff. But, um, at the same time, this is where the second part of the answer is all athletes need some of the same stuff. So there's some things that for sure there's overlap, but any person that works with us is not doing the same, any, any same program that any other person that we're, we're working with has. That's interesting right there. Very interesting stuff. Tim, just to backtrack here to your time with the Lakers, you worked with Gary Vitti. Gary Vitti, obviously, you mentioned it, one of the best in the business at the time. He's now retired. Uh, what was that like going in there and working for the Lakers, A, and B, having a guy like Kobe Bryant there? I know, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. I, you've firsthand dealt with him almost on an everyday basis. What was that like? Well, so I think, yeah, I mean, there, there's two legends in that question. I mean, Gary's a legend in, in the field of sports medicine and athletic training. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, Kobe certainly um, speaks for, for the, the name speaks for itself. And um, so, I mean, and that's a, that's a program, that's an organization that is just laden with legends in the game. And so, yeah, going into that position, I found a way to go in there as a lifelong, lifelong basketball fan, as a lifelong sports fan, and be able to compartmentalize and shut that off and say, I have a job to do. And I think you have to have that ability in that position. Otherwise, you become a fanboy really quick because you're, you're, you know, you're right there. And so it, it um, was something I was able to do and find that ability to kind of just have that singular focus and and see working with and for Gary as uh, you know this is my job this is the person that I'm gonna use as a mentor as a, a you know person that's gonna help to bring experience to my career and and get a chance to work with and from Kobe's standpoint yeah I'll always forget uh, I'll always forget I'll always remember when I first met him and I go I see him coming across toward the weight room and I, I went toward him and, and reached out to shake his hand started to say you know hey I'm Tim DeFrancesco and he slashed my hand out of the way he goes come on man get out of here with that uh, f and beep and bleep and all that stuff and he's like he, he grabs me hugs me he's like hey look I've already heard about you uh, I'm excited to get to work but that's what we got to do so shut up and let's go in the weight room and uh so you know I mean that piece for me made it easy to kind of let my guard down a little bit and know 
how you, you know, how you interact with a guy like that. You just do like any other guy that you're working with. It's just, right. it's, it's definitely a different dude. Um, but you have to get to know the individual and that that's not just with Kobe. That's anybody I've worked with. You have to know some, some guys like to talk about stuff while they're working about out because it takes their mind off of, you know, what they're, they're, they're sort of slogging out in the weight room. Some guys like to be focused. I mean, Kobe would often not have big, long conversations. A lot of times he'd be, eyes closed just zeroed in on reps and stuff like that and um so you you just kind of get a, a a feel for the individual mm. that's perfect Tim. that's perfect so tim uh, obviously in your time in in la you moved across the states the mass uh, uh to uh, massachusetts um talk about how that trend transition was going from the west coast all the way east and starting tae uh, where you're at now. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So, I mean, when I, I tell a lot of entry level people in, in my field uh, about the, the fact of sort of going backwards on, on your question a little bit and saying, well, from, I, I was born and raised in New England and, uh, and I was an East coast guy. I, I love New England. I love the seasons. I love everything about it. And then taking that job in Bakersfield, suddenly you're in the middle of farm and oil country part of part of uh california and totally different everything and um but i think in any if you talk to anybody who's reached visions that they have bigger visions and really succeeded in some of their goals in their career and their lives they'll tell you i had to make big sacrifices i had to take some big risks and I had to put myself out there and, and trust in, in this step or this uh, choice uh, option that didn't necessarily make a lot of sense on paper. I mean, I took a, a, uh, roughly a $60,000 pay cut from my full-time PT job to go work and do athletic training, strength and conditioning and laundry for minor league basketball players. And, and, and you know, I was, <coughs> excuse me, I was in a position in my life when I could do that. Uh, not everybody always is. I, I mean, if that opportunity arose right now, me with two kids and, you know, in a, in a different ball game, a, a thriving business, I probably wouldn't be able to make that, that move in the moment, but I was able to, and I took advantage of that moment in my life when I was able to take that risk, bank on better myself in the process and go after it. Then getting used to LA lifestyle going from, first of all, going from Bakersfield to Manhattan beach, was not really that big of a problem. Um, and, and again, you're going from oil and farming land to Manhattan beach, which is a pretty sweet deal. And, uh, and then, yeah, that's, that's where I lived when I was working with the Lakers, but then that time ran out and um, I was ready to move on and come back. And so coming back to the East coast was a very easy transition for me to be honest with you. I mean, I, again, um, I'm a New England guy, born and bred, and I, I have it in my roots and, and my bones. And so I love it here. And, and so that, that piece was, was pretty, um, pretty seamless and pretty easy for me. That's awesome, man. That's awesome going back home and starting up your own business. That's totally great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tim, you know, for, for being an athletic trainer, you know, you see a lot of things that ba basically a lot of people would say, oh, my God, you know, it, it takes one – one person to basically say, oh, you know, you can't be squeamish at doing your job, everything like that. When you see horrible injuries uh, over the course of your career, like what, what is that like for you in, in a sense, you know, and then trying to help somebody out mentally as well going through that process? Well, the two big ones that stand out for me, I saw I was obviously there when Kobe ruptured his Achilles and I was there when Julius Randle shattered his tibia going up for a layup in his first game in the first few minutes of his first game in the NBA. Yeah. And, um, and you know, the, the thing from Kobe's injury, obviously him walking off the court after, he, after shooting the, layup, the, the free throws was a pretty incredible thing. And it, and it speaks to what that man had from a, a grit and a uh, resiliency um, part of his soul. Uh, but, you know, I think, you see something and, and so, yeah, you, you see as in the locker room when he came in with flanked by a player on each side as they were, you know, helping him kind of take steps and one of the greatest of all time trying to 
process in his mind and you could see as he's going through at this point in his career, is this it? And, you know, having him have to go through that uh, process sitting there in the locker room while the game was finishing. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's not, it's a very hard injury to come back from. It's a, it's an even harder injury to come back from at the age that he was at when that came uh, about. And so, um, seeing that process, uh, with him and, and being with him in a lot of his rehab, um, process was something that I, I give him a lot of credit for. And, and I think anybody that hasn't had an injury like that or, or then had an injury like that and had to return to NBA level basketball, which isn't that many people. Um, it's, it's pretty incredible. And he did that and what it took to do that and, and to sort of see the, determination and the focus that it required and just that mindset of saying like I mean that easiest thing in the world would be look I had a hall of fame career this is it I'm, I'm gonna call it right you know I don't have it left in my tank right now we're, we're watching the the last dance most of us right now and you're seeing the toll that it took on MJ and I don't think a lot of us realize the the Kobe the MJ the Mount Rushmore guys that toll that just being them on a day-to-day basis and, and the magnifying glass that you're under over time just takes. And, and in these upcoming episodes, if I'm reading the tea leaves, right. I mean, he's literally talking about like, I didn't, I, I just, I couldn't, I had no motivation to do the thing that i was put on this earth to do. And it's, you know, just, I think, you know, Kobe had to answer that question in that moment. I mean, do I, he was, he was at that point in his career. He, he's just completely laid everything out for almost 20 years at that point. And then this devastating injury. And it's, it, it, that's the piece more so than any of the physical work that he put in to make it happen is just that mental sort of decision at the end of this exhausting, just lay my soul out on the line for millions of people career. And easiest thing in the world would be for me to call it right now. And nobody, nobody would have begrudged him on that. And, um, you know, he, he said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on my terms. And, uh, so I, I think that piece was the, the part that is the, what I take away from what I saw with Kobe when he had to go through that. And then, um, something like Julius Randall's on the other side of it, he's literally stepping onto the court for the first time seeing his dream come true to play in the NBA yep. and seconds into that, his tibia shatters. And, you know, this is a guy that's a man child. I mean, he's a physical beast and um, suddenly his leg is like a piece of spaghetti. And, and so having a player like that, who's never really seen or had to experience a, a adversity or, you know, injury based adversity and suddenly, having it seen like his debut be ripped out from under him and then wondering what this means for him and, and how that goes and, and seeing a kid like that kind of be resilient and come back from the process. Both of them, you know, you think about what that's like to step back on the court for the first time and know that, well, the re-injury possibility here is, is pretty big. Like, how's this going to feel when I do my first dunk and, and land back on the ground or, or, you know, jump landing or that kind of thing. And, you have to have a lot of mental toughness to kind of put that aside and just say, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to block that out. I'm just going to go play basketball. I'm going to trust in the process of my preparation and, and the stuff that I did here. Mm. So it's uh, definitely a, uh, you know, stuff that I took away from working with guys like that, that uh, was a, an inspiration for sure. Definitely. Tim, uh, before you go, so obviously every athlete now, the season, it started, and then it came to an abrupt halt. And now the leagues are trying to figure out how or when they're going to start back. How And so these guys went from being in shape all season long to being at home for like a month and a half, uh, two months. How does the training change or an alter going from being in shape to possibly not in shape to having to get back in shape again? I look at it like in a, in some ways it's I took my job when I took the job with the Lakers I we the NBA was coming off of a, a lockout and so in, in some ways you had certain players that hadn't taken that lockout period seriously and were, were just sort of wait, wondering if it was going to extend longer they were just kind of hedging their bets and, and chilling 
And, you know, some of those athletes, some of those players took it seriously. And you could tell the day we reopened where, okay, these guys were just definitely chilling and these guys were, were trying to prep for it the best they could. And I think the, the, the difference though is this circumstance is even tougher because a lot of during the lockout, those guys could still go hire a personal trainer. They could go to a gym. They could go shoot. They could go to a, a, a you know, a, a, a workout gym or a basketball gym and, and get all their workouts. in. Right now, a lot of that stuff is just purely shut down. And so a lot of the things as, as at TD Athletes Edge, as we're educating and working with high school athletes, college athletes, athletes that are on rosters uh, of different levels, it's like, look, there you've got to be creative and the programs that we're offering to the people that we're working with um, from the athletic population, from the roster athlete population is the biggest key probably is if you are doing a sport that is including change of direction, um, you know, let just multi-directional um, uh, agility, that kind of stuff or jump landings, You've got to recreate that somehow in the, and in the programming that we're offering to our audience, that part of our audiences, there's stuff you could do in your living room where it's prepping for what we call building the brakes or being able to stop start, being able to jump land. That kind of thing is really critical because if you don't do that right now and who knows how extended this period of time is going to be, and then you go back to your sport, this is, not me saying this, this is how injuries happen is you go from here to here on a, on a uh, sport activity and requirement level. And you weren't prepping during the period. And then all of a sudden you start doing two a days, you have a spike of the sport workload. That's how, that's how injuries happen. And so the jump landing stuff is really key. I mean, you, you, there's plenty of stuff you could do in your living room and your driveway and your garage where you're prepping for that thing and, and just really trying to stay, stay steady with the stimulus of that, because otherwise it's going to be a, a disaster when, when people just kind of flip the light switch back on. Tim sports, they're saying it's supposed to be coming back soon. You mentioned everything about what's going on with how athletes go from basically in the tip top shape to them stopping and coming back again. But let's say, in the event of an injury, right, that, that comes along here for you, you know, since you worked with the professional teams that you worked with, everything like that. Uh, my question for you is, since there's all this that goes on, you know, with, with teams looking at risk management and everything like that, how does that all factor into play here? Do teams actually come, do executives come up to you and ask you these types of questions? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it, that's the the piece where, from my background and having worked with athletes, getting them through return to play processes and and things like that, it's um, you know it's definitely part of my position to work with individuals and and people that are in different levels of of sport to you know, consult and, and help them to kind of understand the best process here and say, like, how do we, how do we prep for this? I think, you know, it's, it's such a unique circumstance we're in right now that nobody really knows, but I mean, that's what we're trying to do at TDF to Tech is whether, whether or not from within our audience, you're going to go back to professional sports or you're going to go back to a high school, college um, uh, sport roster or, um, you know, we, we have a saying that all humans are athletes. And so many of our audience is not going back to a rostered sport, but we want to be able to help you to stay strong and do that in a creative way. Um, because not everybody has access to equipment. Not everybody has access to a ton of stuff in their garage, in their living room, in their house. So we've, we've gone through great lengths to, to be able to offer people in a virtual format, uh, many different, both all the way from a highly customized and individualized training, um, uh, experience, online training experience with our, our coaches and, or anything from our group classes that we're offering live group classes, um, that kind of thing. And, and, and to different levels, we're, we're about to launch a virtual summer high school, college athlete, uh, training, online training, uh, program. Um, we've got, uh, from the basketball standpoint, I have a very cool program that I'm, I'm, I've just softly launched yesterday and, and we'll, we'll open up more 
next week called the Basketball Select Training Program for basketball players that are trying to really take it to the next level during this time and work directly one-on-one -on -one with me through a video assessment and then have me directly program, um, you know, individually for them and work with them in, in those formats. So there's a lot of stuff that can be done. And I have those conversations with people of all levels of all different, different positions who either sometimes the, the, the individual trying to make the, the meet their goals or, or people who, um, they report to. And, and so, um, it's, uh, my team and I uh, are, are very, very, uh, grateful that we can be in a position where we can seamlessly support people of all levels, uh, nagging injuries, anything that you're, you're, you're struggling with, all that kind of stuff, any, any performance goals that you have. Uh, there's, it, it's been very fun, actually, and uh, exciting to have to open up our brains and think about creative ways to help people when maybe they don't have dumbbells, maybe they don't have a barbell, they don't have a cable machine, they don't, you know, that kind of thing. So, yep. um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been really fun. And I, I love seeing the light bulb go off with people when they're like, wow, I, I, I was kind of chalking it up to, I, I didn't know what I was going to do during this time, but I'm, I'm still going to be able to be ready and I'm going to meet my goals even despite this. Tim, that is amazing. Tim, my final question for you was, are there any plans to open up in a different state or in, in back in California, in New York, in Florida, what, um, what does the expansion uh, look like uh, for you guys? Great question. I, I think it remains to be seen. I think, you know, we, we certainly are constantly looking at our growth patterns and would absolutely be, we definitely see ourselves being able to expand into different parts of the country in an in-person format. And then, you know, if, if, if nothing else, you know, timeline on that and exact locations on that, um, obviously something that needs to be developed a bit, but I think um, in terms of what we're able to do and what we're stepping up to being able to do in this circumstance right now is saying, you know, whether you're somewhere outside of Massachusetts or outside of this country, we can support you virtually as well and, right. and do it in a really cool, really seamless way. Mo, mo, you know, the people that have started and, and have, have worked with us in our online training experiences uh, have just been shocked at how seamless it is to experiences that they may have had with in-person training. Um, and so part of that is technology. Part of that is our team. I mean, we're a dedicated, passionate group of people that will, um, you know, turn over every stone it takes to, to help the people that we want to help. And, and um, so would, would love to anybody listening, um, whether you have nagging injuries, I, I, a lot of people, this, this is big. Uh, the name of a brand for us is TD Athletes Edge. And people I, I at times say, well, I, I saw that and I'm not really an athlete, so I didn't call and check and see how you can help me. And I want to really you know, clarify that it's like we have that saying, all humans are athletes. Major parts of our audience are people that are not on a rostered sport team. And so we help all people of all levels. My background as a doctor of physical therapy, it allows us to figure out your starting point, no matter what it is. Um, you know, I, I'm hopping on a call in just a little bit with uh, a woman who's in her 60s and has had uh, a hip replacement and is trying to get back to maybe doing some jogging if she can, but she hasn't been able to, helping her figure that out. You know, I did a, I did a, a team workout earlier with a bunch of prep school basketball players in Austin, Texas. So there's, you know, there's, there's, um, uh, you know, we, we have an ability to reach uh, really anybody, no matter what your starting point is, you're all athletes. Every one of us is an athlete and um, we can, we can help you. So, um, you know, the best way to, to, to find out more about us is on our website, www.tdathletesedge.com. If you follow me on Instagram, at tdathletesedge, you can direct message me. I will get back to it. Will is a, a, a testament to that. And, um, <laughs> you know, uh, so those are two great ways to do that. Um, and, and then I can leave you guys with uh, a link and uh, even a, a phone number where people can just text me directly and, and kind of let me know what you're struggling with. I, I love getting on the phone with people and, and just saying like from a, a, a workout standpoint, from a nagging injury standpoint, from a performance standpoint for you, what's been the hurdle 
let's break this down. Let's figure it out. Let me share with you how we can help you. So that's what, that's what I'm on this earth to do. And um, I love doing it. So I, I sure appreciate you guys giving me a chance to kind of hop on, tell a little bit of my story and, and go back and forth with you. Happy to do it anytime. Tim, thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate you. I do have one more, one more go. question for you. Yeah. Okay. I know we're limited on time. Actually, it's kind of, it's kind of a two part <laughs> question. Number one, eating food and, you know, breaking down food. It's huge in order for people to work out. You've seen these people go on crazy diets and, yeah. you know, trying to go out there and try and get the right vegetables in everything like that. Uh, what, what's your take on, on these crazy diets going in number one and number two, how do the people follow you on social media? Perfect. So the, I'm glad you brought that up. Our, our nutrition coaching um, service and, and program is one that I'm, I'm very proud of. And, and our lead coach with that, Coach Ryan Healy, does an incredible job. She's incredible with helping people to build better habits. Where people get into the problem is nobody can follow this strict meal plan regimen that is day in, day out, boring, bland food, and it's strict and it's, it's not sustainable. If you build better habits, look guys, I mean, the, uh, it's, it's inevitable. We're all humans. We're going to go off the rails at some point. We're going to go, you know, crush a bag of chips. We're going to go, <laughs> you know, hit the pizza hard or whatever it is. Yeah, whatever you're, yeah exactly. <laughs> and, and like, that's going to happen. But the key is, do you have the habits that help you sort of, okay, let's steer this back on. That's going to happen. I'm not going to uh, overburden myself with stress that, that, that I made a bad choice there, that kind of thing. It's like, that's okay, because I've got this toolbox of habits that I know how to get myself back on track. The food piece, to me, is, oh, it's so overcomplicated by clinicians and professionals in this, this space of, you know, um, dietitians or nutrition coaches often. That's why I love about what coach Ryan Healy does with, with our, um, our, our members in our nutrition coaching program is simplify the process. Let's, let's just let the, it really comes down to your, just the habits that you've built and being able to kind of think about and know the, the real food options as often as you can make those options and coming up with every one of us is different. We all have a little bit of a different kind of vice or we have a different way relationship with food. And so when you unpack that with a nutrition coach like Ryan Healy and you sort of figure out what is that sort of bugaboo for you individually, then you can put together this habit forming process of, okay, I know for me, I'm probably not going to, I hate spin, you know, I hate spinach or I hate, you know, whatever bananas or whatever it is, but I, I like these five other leafy green veggies and I love these other five other fruits. So for me, that's how I can make a fruit salad for a snack at night or that, you know, I, I I'm going to, you know, I know what my fat five favorite things are to make a quick, easy salad with a bunch of protein on there. And, and for me, I need it to taste good. So I add some cheese on there. That's okay. Like, you know, it's when you have to get down these strict sort of one size fits all diet plans that people are like, <laughs> I'm out of here. This is not going to work for me. Right. And then, and then you're just sort of banging your head on the wall. And you're, like you said, you're, you're jumping from one extreme approach to the next. And it's just got to be this long game approach. So that's how we do it. Um, to follow me on social media and, and our team, it's going to be at TD Athletes Edge on uh, Instagram, on Twitter, um, and, and you can check our team pages out as, as well um, at Team TDAE. And, um, you, you know, I think those are probably the – I'm personally most active on Instagram. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I, I think that's, that's the best place to – to get to me and and i'm very responsive like i said i'm i i love touching base with people and and just helping them solve those problems and even your personal instagram too you know it's yes awesome you know it's awesome just Thank seeing you. you just seeing you go out there and actually show the workouts that you do show the people like hey you know this is the right way how to warm up and you've been there you've done it it's totally awesome to see that tim and i'm happy for you that you actually you're doing a great job well, I, I sure appreciate that. And, and uh, like I said, hopping on with you guys and be able to, you know, talk about it and, and uh, hang out a little bit is a, is a pleasure. And I definitely look forward to being able to do it more in the future. Tim, you appreciate awesome. you, Tim. I appreciate you, pal.
You're always welcome back on the show whenever you want. So thank you for coming on. Thank you, guys. Let's do this again. All right, Tim. I'll see you soon, baby. Awesome, baby. Awesome. I was the one and only Tim D. Francesco from TD Athletes Edge. Great, great stuff right there, Sean. Any final thoughts for you, sir? Yeah, well, it's always important because, and I like what he said at the end. I mean, um, I like uh, what you said at the end with what he does well. A lot of people just like to jump into just working out. A lot of people forget the importance of getting everything warm, your core warm, your muscles warm, everything warm. So that is so important to do. So a great interview by a great guy and a great team. So wishing everybody at TDAE nothing but the best. Absolutely. Sean, great show. Got to give a shout out again to Tim DeFrancesco. Always a pleasure, but thank you again for coming on. Really appreciate it. And for my lovely co-host, Sean Thomas, a.k.a. Sean on the mic, always killing it. I'm your host, Will Trucci, logging out. We will talk to you guys soon. Peace out and be safe. And quick shout out to all the essential workers out there. Cannot forget about them. They're killing it. Yesterday was National Nurses Day. I know a lot of nurses. I I know a lot of essential workers. Thank you. All right, guys. We're logging out. We'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.